Transfer learning is the best friend of deep learning and is talked about way too little. We will discuss what it is, how to use it in deep learning, what distinguishes it from fine tuning and then we will actually program it and transfer learn some image classification task. Transfer learning is an important technique in machine learning. It is the technique of learning on one set of data and then applying the learned state to a different set of data. It is usually done for tasks where your data set has has two little points to train a full-scale model from scratch. Imagine that you have been asked to build a system that can distinguish BMWs from Ferrari. This could be anything from photos, videos, etc. In doing so directly, you would need to have tens of multiple hundred thousands of images of BMWs and Ferraris. And I mean, what about Hondas or Hondas in snow or well, a cat in the snow? That's exactly where transfer learning is the best choice for any project. The basic idea is to train on a lot of data to first learn the difference of a car to a cat in the snow and then once you have achieved that you store the saved weights, change the topmost part of the model and train on your maybe thousands of images of Ferraris and BMWs. This process is also closely related to fine-tuning. Transfer learning versus fine-tuning. These two terms are often mixed up and used interchangeably. This is since they are often part of the very same process. Transfer learning consists of taking features learned on one problem and leveraging them on a new similar problem as we already discussed. The steps we usually go through are take a layer from a model that was trained on different data, like the model we trained on recognizing cars from cats in the snow. Freeze the layers. This means that their state will not be updated during future training. Add some new layers on top of the pre-trained model that you will train on your new data. Now fine-tuning is the same with the small difference that you do not freeze these layers as in step 2 and instead use a small learning rate and fine-tune the model to perform well at the new task. Now you can also fine-tune after transfer learning and some people will actually call the entire process fine-tuning so there's that and if people use the term interchangeably don't be confused. But remember that transfer learning is adding layers to a trained model and only train those layers and fine-tuning in contrast is when you train the entire model with a small learning rate. Okay, let's actually program some transfer learning and some fine tuning. We start off by importing some simple little things. We'll do it today with Keras because it's way less code than with PyTorch. The data set we are going to work with today is the Siver 1, actually the Siver 10. And you can kind of see some images here. It's uh, some simple image classification problem and we're gonna do it in three ways. First, we're gonna just train on the data and see how well we perform. Second, we're gonna do transfer learning. And third, we are gonna do some fine tuning on this data set. So we have these 10 classes. We have airplanes, automobiles, with birds, with cats, with deer, with dogs, with frogs, with horses, and ships and trucks. The first thing we have to do is actually load the data set. So there's some handy method from Keras where you can simply split them into train and test set and it's already split well. Just to show you some examples how something looks when you put it into a resolution of 33 by 33. Uh, probably a frog, I don't know, it is like a truck. Maybe also a truck or a car in that sense, uh, an animal again and a car again. Um, as you see, it's not that trivial of a task, but models handle this surprisingly well. Next thing we have to do, because the labels uh, kind of look a bit more like numbers, so they're like the vector of numbers between 0 and 10, we actually have to convert it to so-called one-hot encoding. That simply means that you basically go from something like, uh, you know, like uh, 7, you go to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And let's assume there are more zeros. So right, one hot encoding. If you know what that means already, else maybe look it up. This is bad and this is not really gonna well work that well. We are mostly considering an example where we have too little data to completely learn image classification from. So basically, Generally, images are very complicated and there are millions of classes, so you cannot just go with a thousand or ten thousand samples and learn something 
from image data. What you can do, however, is uh, over load an already pre-trained ResNet. This is this one. As we already discussed, we have 10 classes with an input tensor of size 33 by 33 by 3, which mostly means that uh, it's 33 pixels by 33 pixels. And there's a channel of colors, and generally color channels are uh, well free. So you have a red, a green, and a blue. For the first example, where we do not do fine tuning and we do not do transfer learning, we simply call the ResNet architecture and we initialize the weights to none, which means random initialization as it usually is done. Then we make the layers trainable, which you don't necessarily need to do. I just want to make it very explicit here. What we then do is build a simple Keras model and uh, what we give it is the ResNet. As you see we here we loaded it off the top. That means it's the entire ResNet model which is like a state-of-the-art image whatever model so you can use it for classification or description and many more things that you do with images. Then we wrap it into some Keras so this basically just creates a simple Keras model. You feed all the layers that the ResNet 50 has which will be, well, let's actually check that shortly for you. So it has an input layer, then it has a lot of uh, 2D convolution, batch number, a lot of complicated things and tons of layers. So this is a very complicated model in that sense. It's the ResNet 50, so it's not the most complicated or the most state of the art. It's just like something you can work with. Then we put on top of it, we put a dense layer. This flatten simply uh, converts the dimensions of the image again back to uh, flat, well, list of numbers and then we put the amount of classes which is 10 and the softmax which is simply a classification head as it is called. Then we compile the model, we simply use an atom and a categorical cross entropy and accuracy because we don't care so much. So we fit the X train and the X uh, the X-train and the Y-train for three epochs and what we see here the accuracy is starting off pretty bad and it will go to around 0.2. I'll uh, show you the results later on. Now what you've all been waiting for, let's do some transfer learning again with the same architecture. It's pretty much the same code as above, so I will not go through it as detailed, but the things you may notice here is we are initializing the weights not anymore randomly, but with the so-called ImageNet pre-trained weights. This means this model has already been trained by someone else for us and we can use it now. So it's already very good at classifying images in general. Now, the other thing, as we already pointed out, transfer learning, usually you freeze all the layers, which translate into Keras by making the layers trainable equals false. So they will not be trained during training. Then we again open the same architecture we did before. We add all our layers, we flatten, blah, blah, blah. And we only are going to train three layers or whatever. And we are not going to train all the layers in here. This is the main difference to this model where we set everything to trainable. So it also takes a long time to train. So we see here 14 minutes or something per epoch. If we compare this to this model here, it takes some seconds, we see that the epoch time is only about like three minutes, which is already a big advantage of transfer learning. You will have to use way less training time, you'll have to use way less um, data, and additionally your performance will be way better. As we see here, we already start off with like 40% accuracy, where if we go back up there, we saw that it was around 20% when we started off. Now you know what transfer learning is and you know what normal training is, let's actually also do fine tuning. As we already mentioned at the beginning of this video, the main difference is that instead of freezing the layers here, you make the entire model trainable, but instead of starting from random weights, you also start from pre-trained weights as we did in the previous model. The rest of the architecture is all the same, with one small difference that you usually use a bit of a smaller learning rate here than you use above. Why is that? Because here you already have somewhat sensible states of the layers and as you know, the longer you train the model, usually you will less, need less learning rate because your weights need less updates over time or less strong updates to get better. And this is exactly why fine tuning is usually done with a smaller learning rate. For the finishing, let's now actually look at the results. As 
I wanted to create a scenario where we have to have little data points. I chose 500 points for a train set and 100 points for the test set. This also makes it easier for you to run it at home. If we look at the results of the model which has no pre-training, so whether it's neither transfer learning nor fine-tuning, we could get a terrible accuracy score. Uh, we actually overfit here on the training set, but no matter what you do really, uh, it's not going to work with this little data points. Now let's actually look at the transfer learn model. So the model that has been initialized with the ResNet, uh, with the ImageNet weights. As we can see here, I evaluated the model before we started training, even just to see how, what the random initialization would look like. And it's a 10%, so we can say, hey, this is pretty, I mean, this is worse than random in that sense. So the model which was uh, only trained on the 500 data points. If we go now down here, we see two things. So since we're only training in this transfer learning model, the upper three layers, we will have 100 milliseconds per step as opposed to 600 milliseconds per step. So it's like six folds faster. That's the first thing we should notice. The second thing we should notice, our score is a lot better, even though we use the same training parameters. We also overfitted here pretty comfortably. Um, that's not the point of the video. All I want to show you is if you use pre-trained weights or an already pre-trained model, you'll get way better in way shorter time in that sense. Now for the finishing, let's actually look at transfer learning plus fine tuning. So again, we train the model as with the transfer learned model. We do uh, same learning rates to epochs and we actually get an accuracy of 39%, which indicates that for three epochs are actually not that bad. But then again, it's pretty random because I didn't tune these things so, so much. Anyway, what we then do is we set the layers to trainable. We take, a, a, let's say, a slightly smaller learning rate and we trade for, train for one more epoch. And what we can see here, apart from that it again took longer and here it was six folds faster. So again, if you only train fewer layers, you'll be faster you will actually have an, a slightly higher accuracy score, accuracy score than if you've just trained for three, three epochs as with this example. And this goes to show that it can be very valuable to also consider fine tuning a model instead of simply using transfer learning. One last thing that I wanted to discuss is what you can actually do as you've maybe noticed here, since you in the especially transfer learn way, you only train the last some layers and freeze the this first part you can actually embed your training samples what does this mean so imagine you take your training sample at position zero your first training example you throw it through resnet and what you'll get at the end is the size of the last layer of resnet so this will be some vector let's say 256 something whatever and you can then store this vector and make a new data, so, uh, data set with these embedded samples and then just continue training with them instead of having to, you know, initialize this model every time and it just creates a lot of ever overhead that makes you slower. And this was it with me for the week. Make sure to recommend this video to the mighty YouTube algorithm by leaving a like and clicking on that subscribe image of me coming up right now. Thank <laughs> you.